Hello community, I hope you are doing good. In this discussion, we will see introduction about the context. And in case you missed previous discussion about introduction about the oval framework, please check link is given in the description. And if you want to learn more about Odoo, you can visit the Weblands channel. Under the playlist, you can see Odoo development playlist available with the different topic wise with the real test cases. And in case you need any support related Odoo, you can visit the about page and send your query to this email address. Source code also available in the GitHub, make sure you can follow that Git repository. So let's back to our main topic, introduction about the context. So in this session, we will cover the theoretical part of the context and later on we will try to perform some practical example, the useful examples of the context. So the first thing is what is context, right? So context is a versatile tool in Odoo and uh, context is a small but the very powerful feature in the Odoo. Let's say if you want to perform some operations or let's say if you want to pass extra informations, that time context is come to the picture. We can do many things using the context. We will see later on. So first of all see the what is the syntax of the context. So context is nothing but the key and pair value. Uh, which is the python dictionary simple so it's having only a key and the value in this example you can see when you print the simple context right so that time you will get such basic informations about like this active underscore id active underscore model lang company underscore id or allowed underscore company underscore ids right now i gave you here the sample of the context but it could be also having a more keys and values all right so we will see later on so like let's say uh, what operations we can perform using the context right so yeah we can do a many things let's say if you want to add a default value to the form you right if you already know we already discussed in the field level we have a one more attribute right default equal to and then we have to specify that value so when you try to create a new record it will automatically pop up that new value which is defined in the def, uh, default attribute right so same operation you can also perform using the context how we will see in our next session then after let's say if you want to perform or let's say if you want to open the specific form view or let's say the tree view or let's say the search view that time you can also use the context then after let's say if you want to pass some extra informations that is also possible then after let's say if you want to set the default group by or filter by feature in the list view pivot view or let's say calendar kanban view right so that time the context comes to the picture then after let's say if you want to change the behavior of the specific fields or the buttons and all so that time the context also come to the picture the last but not the least you can also override the context we will see everything about the context in one by one practical example so you will understand what is context i hope till now you already have like enough informations about the context as a theoretical but let's see the practical in our next session so now let's say there are a few but the useful context keys you should know about it so the first thing is the active underscore model so when you are switching one view to another view or let's say if you are performing some uh, operations right crude operations so if you want to see in the back end side which model is already activated so here the context provides active underscore model and the value should be that uh, current uh, model name then after the active underscore id let's say if i'm trying to open the specific form view and i'm trying to perform some operations here and here i want to try to get the informations about that current form uh, active id right what is the current record set id is i will get it from using the context using active underscore id in the backend side after that let's say if you want to add a default value you want to pop up in the new record in the gui screen right that time you can use default underscore and then after the star you can see here the star is the field name 
the existing field and we will see this one in the upcoming session and then after let's say if you want to add some default filter or the default uh, group by option while you click to the specific menu right that time you can use the search underscore default underscore that specific filter or the group by name well this is the operational thing we will see this part also this is very useful then after let's say if you are working with the multi language right so whenever you are switching one view to another view in the back end side if you want to get the language current users preferred language right you can also get using the lang keyword then after active underscore ids same like the active underscore id the thing is the different the main difference is here is let's say if you are working with the list view and you selected multiple records in the back end side if you want to perform all those selected ids right that time context will pass the active underscore ids we will see later on about this active underscore ids which is list of integer data type so here in the list in the list you will get the record set ids then after let's say if you want to open the specific form view right you can use this form view ref as a parameter and then after you can pass here the xml id same like the form view you can also open the tree view using this tree view ref and then the xml id same like the search view if you already have a search view and you want to pass that view you want to use that view so you can also pass in the search view ref then after let's say if, if you are working with the binary file and if you want to uh, set the size of that specific uh, binary field you can use this bean underscore size then after active underscore test let's say we already talked about the soft delete and the hard delete right we also discussed about the archived and unarchived concept right so same here if you pass this active underscore test it will automatically search all the records in the database including the archived including the non-archived records we will see this one also in using the practical to understand more then after let's say if you want to uh, get the current users the record set id then you can just use uid then after let's say in the res.partner model and that partner if you want to show the specific address part right street street 2 city zip code then after state and country in an organized way you can just pass so underscore address and it will automatically populate that specific view this is the operational part we will see in our later session but this is very useful to understand more then after let's say if you are working with the multi company right so when you are performing some operations and if you want to get the user's preferred company id selected in the user's profile you will get from this company underscore id then after allowed underscore company underscore ids so this is the same but the thing is it will return the list of ids so here let's say we have a like multiple companies configured in the user profile right so it will fetch all the accessible company ids in the list so this is not only about those with discuss points right it it could be a more but we will try to cover all the scenarios regarding the context context is not a small feature but it's a vast feature and uh, if you know more about the context right especially this common uh, keys how to use then after you will be a good Odoo developer i hope you understood more about context especially the theoretical part right so now onward in our next session we will try to cover all the topics one by one and if you have any doubt related to this topic please comment below and see you in our next session